Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today I'm doing a very special video. I feel over the course of my channel I've kind of neglected the lower elo community. I'm talking below bronze like iron even you know bronze maybe low silver but even talking level 30s pre level 30s and I feel like these players the players that really maybe are scared to get into ranked or uh, are maybe dissuaded from playing ranked I believe these guys these people are the future of the game. And so I felt inspired to make a video toward you know directed at these play these players, the players that are new to the game who want to get into ranked, maybe a little bit anxious and really want to get off on the right foot. And so for those of you who are more familiar with my content, I would highly suggest you send this to people who are looking to get into the game. Maybe your your brother, your father, your uncle, or a friend, colleague at work, or whatever it might be, someone who wants to get started, get set off on the right foot. This is the video for them. Okay, so we're going to dive in and I'm really going to try and cover everything you really need to know to get started. League will be the hardest game you play by far. Most of your friends, and now I'm talking to you new players right now, most of your friends who already play the game will not appreciate how hard the game is. They will completely and utterly underestimate how much about the game they actually know. You should actually ask them, as a little bit of an experiment, the following questions. How many hours have you played League? Bot games, normal games, ARAMs, ranked all together, roughly. What was your MOBA experience like or gaming background like before heading into League? Were you an FPS gamer? You played StarCraft, you played Hon, Dota, what did you play? What season did you learn the game? Did you did, did that did that friend have the luxury of learning the game in an earlier season, like season five, season six, season four, season three, or whatever it might be? Because the earlier you learned League of Legends, the more forgiving the game was. Now the game is a lot more sophisticated. These questions will give you at least a basic insight into their league journey and why they might be having an easier time with the game than you might be. Understanding your league journey is something people fundamentally fail to do. Let's compare two people's league journey. Let's take Bob, long-term PC gamer, played StarCraft, Dota, both at a very high level, was highly competitive at every single PC game he played. When he played league, maybe he also had the luxury of picking up league during maybe a holiday period at school, so he had a lot of time to sink into the game. If we compare that that journey with the, with the with Jim, for example, let's say Jim was actually a, a console gamer. He played a lot of PlayStation growing up. Maybe his friends didn't play PC, his family didn't accept PC gaming, whatever it might be. And maybe when he picked up League, he was picking it picking it up while he was working full time and didn't really have that much time to put into the game. We can tell with these two journeys that they're going to have vastly different experiences with the game. So out of these two journeys, who do you think had the easier time picking up League? Pretty obviously, Bob was going to have a much easier time. So this is why we fundamentally cannot compare the League journeys of any player because the context in which we learn the game is very important. If you want to learn more about this, this whole concept of understanding your League journey, I have a whole video on my YouTube channel dedicated towards it. Uh, check it out. I'll put the link in the description. One of the things that pisses me off the most is that people really, really fail to understand how hard the game is. People who even now casually play the game, they look past the hundreds and thousands of hours they put in and will say things to you when you're playing with them, just go in and kill him. Why don't you just go in and kill him? Come on, it's so obvious. A single trade in lane requires many, many things that are just a, a, a lot of people are blind to because it's all muscle memory, it's all intuition. For example, mastery over my range assessment and my damage assessment, uh, good quality camera control, ability to click and move accurately, knowledge over what the enemy kit does, his ranges, his damage, his cooldowns, awareness of the minions and how the minions are interacting in the wave state. The list goes on. A lot of this for players who have played the game for quite a long time, this is all muscle memory. They don't need to think or use their, their prefrontal cortex to think about these things. Okay, very important that we understand what's going on here. So what would I recommend to someone who's starting out of the game brand new? What would I say? Well, first things first, you need to play as many champions as possible across all roles. 
have fun, only play normals and bot games, don't rush into ranked. During this time, you don't want to be thinking too much. You don't really want to be ingesting too much content. You just want to play, feel out the game, have a lot of fun. Now, I have a very unique opinion about bot games. I think bot games are severely underutilized. I think you should start with bots and you should be basically farming bots before you move on to ranked. Bots should be boring before you go into normal game. So you should be killing bots 12, 15 times in a game before you move on because what bot games do is it really allows you to gain a lot of mastery over your champion without overwhelming your mental stack. And the concept of a mental stack we'll touch on later on. We'll, we'll kind of cover that concept later. But I just feel, feel like people rush into ranked for no real good reason. Your goal in these normal games, when you do eventually get to normal games, is to gain a solid understanding of what every champion in the game does. And I'd only move on to ranked when I had solid mastery on my champion and I had a solid understanding of, at least at a baseline level, what every champion in the game does. And a lot of people skip over this. They get into ranked and they try to learn the game in ranked. So you're actually simultaneously doing two things. If you rush into ranked, you're, you're trying to compete and you're trying to learn. But when you're playing in normal games and bot games, you can purely focus on learning without the pressure of losing the game uh, for your teammates or losing LP, whatever it might be. Now, some people like myself will really struggle with the mechanical aspect of the game. When I first came to League of Legends, I literally had to look at the keyboard. I, I couldn't place my my fingers on the QWE. I'm like, like, I'm trying to show you what I would do. I would look at the screen, the monitor, try and control my character, and then I would have to direct my eyes down to my keyboard to make sure that my fingers were placed in the correct place on the keyboard because I came from an FPS background. So I was used to having WASD, you know, having my pinky on shift and like moving my, my forefinger from D to F, things like that. I had never used QWER. I didn't come from a sophisticated uh, MOBA background or even like a uh, like a World of Warcraft background or anything like that. So it took me a very long time, literally like weeks and months, to stop looking at my keyboard and sort of purely focus on my screen. And even though that's, that, may, that may sound ridiculous to some people, you've got to remember this ties back to understanding your league journey. For some people, it will take a year, literally a year, just to feel comfortable with controlling your character. And I'm not here to judge anyone. And this is the point of this video. Everyone is at different stages of their learning journey. And because of the context of the of your gaming background, everyone picks up the game differently. Something that I'm really passionate about is that um, for a lot of people who are new to PC games, so let's say you came through the route of a console game. And let's say you'd only played Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo or whatever it might be. When you first play League, say League is your first PC game, you're actually doing two things. You're simultaneously learning the game of League of Legends, but you're also learning to play an online multiplayer PC game. You're doing two things at once, but for an old school PC gamer, they are purely playing and learning League of Legends. They don't need to know what it feels like to hold a mouse and keyboard and have comfortability in an online environment on a PC. So, it's, you know, it, it, again, it sounds, it's something we overlook a lot within the League community. Now, there are a series of underlying game fundamentals that I think are very helpful to know. And these are things that I wish I knew when I was starting out at playing League of Legends. CS and farm is extremely important. Roughly 15 CS is worth about a kill's worth of gold. And gold and XP dictates the strength of a given champion. The more gold and XP, the better. And when you're starting to, you know, when you're playing and starting the game for the first time, you need to feel what it's like to get to your key item spikes. You won't know what you are missing out on until this moment. And you may ask, well, what the hell is an item spike? Well, an item spike is when you finish a particular item or a component that enables your champion. Some examples are Malzahar with Lost Chapter, Yone with Berserker Greaves, Zed with Serrated Dirk, the list goes on. Some champions also require certain levels to become relevant, like KO level 16, 11, Kassen level 11 and 16, Silas level 7, level 9, Fizz level 6, Zed level 6. Don't worry too much about understanding this for every single champion. You just need to understand what this looks like and feels like for your champion. What are my key level spikes and item spikes? When do I become relevant? Now, learning how to CS and how minions fundamentally interact is extremely important. And the thing is that this is one of the few things within League of Legends that is actually drillable. Now, the difference between League and a lot of other games, and, and even you say we're comparing to true tr traditional sport, League, not many things within League are drillable in the sense that we can't isolate many of the skills. 
CSing is one of the few things that we can isolate. We can go into the practice school, we can load up the minions, we can get the minions coming into our tower, and we can practice layering the minions, knowing how to prepare CS, understanding which minion is dying fast and slow, how the size of a wave impacts and interacts with each other. These are things we can actually fundamentally drill and build that muscle memory. When we think of a lot of other games like FPSs, say for example, Counter-Strike, you can replicate a very specific situation. Say we're playing Inferno, you know, a map on Counter-Strike. Okay, these are the smokes that go down. People have these guns, you're camping there, I'm here. We can, we can replicate a very specific round or a very specific situation. We can't do that in League of Legends. And this is why League is such a hard game to learn because you know, when you're playing the game itself, you're trying to learn and perform. You're trying to learn and win. Or in basketball, even a traditional sport, you can go into the, the local court and you can drill free, shot, free throws or three-point shots or dribbling or whatever it might be. And that's just, the, that's just the way League of Legends is, one of the main reasons it's such a, an incredibly difficult game. Now, trying to farm and get to your items without dying is 90% of League of Legends, specifically playing as a laner. Dying is very bad. When you die, you are going to miss out on gold and experience. More importantly, the enemy that you're versing is going to continue to farm, so the gap gets larger. Even people who are very experienced with the game fundamentally forget how impactful dying is. So when I first started playing League, I didn't really understand what the purpose of a lane phase was. Like, I rocked up to lane, there's minions, there's an enemy champion, there's a tower. What do I do? Like, what should my mindset be? What am I trying to fundamentally do here? Am I trying to, am I just here to handshake an agreement with my with my enemy here and say we don't touch each other and we just farm? Am I meant to try and kill this guy at all costs? Do I, what do I do? I didn't really understand what the, what the purpose of a lane phase was. What I realized over time is that laning phase is a balancing act between trading and farming. And it depends, oh, how, where you are in the spectrum of trading versus farming depends on the champion that you're playing. Some champions need a lot of farm and levels to be useful. Others can trade very early on. This is, this is why champion mastery is so fundamentally important. Understanding what your champion wants and why. And when you're starting to develop champ mastery, you'll start to get these intuitions and these feelings. Oh, it actually feels really good for me to trade early. I feel really strong early and other champions feel really weak early. That's tying back to item spikes and level spikes. One of the big problems I see with a lot of introductory clients, beginners, is that they think in this very black and white way where it's, I am weak early, therefore I should only farm, or I am strong early, therefore I should only kill the enemy. League is a lot more nuanced than that. And, and a lot of the, one of the main questions I, I get is, Curtis, why can't I just sit here and farm? Why do I even have to trade? Well, you've got to remember trading actually creates space for you to farm. So if I'm playing, for example, let's say I'm playing Kale you know, classic scaling champion. And let's say I sit back under my tower and the enemy gets up in my face and I just don't trade with him. What's gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna lose a lot of access to minions. I'm probably gonna get poked out and I'm not really gonna be able to get access to all this farm that I need to get. But if I trade a little bit of resources back, stand my ground inside my minion wave, I won't get zoned for my minions and I'll be able to get those minions, get that farm and get relevant into the game um, faster, essentially. So don't think of it in terms of black and white, I can farm or I can't farm. A lot of the time it's very nuanced and this is where it all ties back to champion mastery. What does my champion love doing? What does my champion feel good doing? And again, I don't want you guys to overcomplicate this. I think the key message here is that when you're first starting out, especially in the lane phase, your goal is to develop that muscle memory. How does it, you know, develop that feel of moving your character, moving your character confidently, learning how to CS and trade confidently without it occupying too much of your mental stack. Now, we've spoken a lot about mental stack. What the hell is it? Okay, so I want you to think about when you first learned to drive. You get into the car and you put the, you know, you put your seatbelt on, you get in, you understand what everything does and you're in like a, maybe an abandoned parking lot or, uh, lot or something. And your mother or your, your dad says, okay, just just go. Just just slowly put your foot on the accelerator and just go. And you're fully focused on putting both hands on the steering wheel. You're probably thinking a lot about the accelerator and the brake and you're probably jerking all over the place. It's probably very, you know, it's a very, uh, uh, it's very intense, both physically and mentally. It occupies a lot of your mental stack. And so you're not really aware of what's happening around you whatsoever. You're so focused on what's happening right in front of you and what you're doing right here with your hands and feet that you can't 
have a conversation. You don't know what's happening on the radio. You probably are not aware of what's happening either side. You're not able to check your, your rear view mirror, your side mirrors. You're completely overwhelmed. But what happens as you start to drive the car more? You start to develop that muscle memory, that feel with the car, so then you can confidently you know, relax a little bit, look at your rear view mirrors a lot more, you gain a lot of spatial awareness. Same thing happens in league. The more you play and the more muscle memory you develop, you're able to free up your mind to think about what's happening holistically around you. What's happening top, bot? What's happening with my jungle? Where's my teammate's location? How much gold do I have? When should I think, when should I reset? You know, you're starting to think bigger picture, but you can't think bigger picture at the start because your mental stack is so overwhelmed. But what about macro? You know, what is, what is my take on macro? Well, especially when you're starting out guys in the very lower ELO brackets, there is no such thing as macro. All you gotta do is, you know, have your lane phase, get strong, get to your items, get to your levels, and then uh, focus on trading, your farming, your resetting, and reset when you're low so you don't die, and essentially just group when the map opens up. That's it, group when the map opens up. You don't need to do anything sophisticated. When we're in level 30 and we're in iron, we're playing normal games, there is no macro, everyone, no one knows what they're doing. So don't really worry about the term macro, split pushing and all this trading objectives. Don't worry about any of that. Just focus on just the early lane and then group with your team when they group. And I always get asked about towers. Like how should I think about towers? How should I conceptualize towers? Well, remember towers, uh, the way I think about towers is that towers are a luxury. If you've ticked every box, like you know where the jungler is, the enemy's not here, and you don't need to base yourself, you're nice and healthy, then sure you can hit the tower, but it's a luxury. It's not something you really need to focus on. So remember, you just, you just must protect yourself at all times. The importance of not dying, guys. I'm, tying, I'm gonna tie this back to this concept a lot in this video. Simply do not die. Remember what I said before? League is 90% of league is simply farming, being strong while not dying. So that's kind of the way I really think about towers. Towers is a luxury. So now we're getting into the juicy stuff. You may ask, well, Curtis, how do I know what champion and role to play? Like I've played all these champs. I know what they all do. What should I do? Well, for me, what I realize is that when you play a lot of league, you'll begin to have these instincts or like hunches about what style you like or how do you fundamentally like to play the game? For me, it actually looked a little bit like this. I, I played a bit of everything. I understood kind of what everyone did. And then I liked Yorick and Gangplank top. So I played a lot of top. And then I liked Jana and Vayne, moved to bot lane. And then I went to mid and played Malzaha. And then I went to jungle, played Skarner and Hecarim. These are all the champs I had fun with. Finally, over this like two year period or whatever it might be, I finally realized I loved Artillery Mages. I love the Ziggs, I love the Zereth. I love Control Mages like Orianna. And I started to dabble in Cassiopeia. It took me literally two years, maybe even a little bit more to realize what my fundamental, maybe even three years actually, what my fundamental identity as a player was. For some people, they'll click straight away, other people, not so much. This is an extremely fun part of your journey, so do not rush it. Relax, have fun, play all champs, all roles. It will come to you eventually, don't you worry about that. Now, once you've decided upon what champion, what role you want to play, you need to commit. You need to learn everything about this champion. And ideally, especially when you're starting off, ideally this champion is quite simple and not complex. Now you may ask, okay, what dictates the complexity of a champion? Well, there's three things that dictate the complexity of a champion. The first one is the ability to separate fundamentals. We're not gonna go too deep on that for now. Mechanical execution difficulty and reference point clarity. Very simply put, if I'll TLDR each of these three categories, in the game, there are fundamentals in lane phase. Um, for example, you know, wave management, trading, leaning and warding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are champions that allow you to kind of separate and isolate the fundamentals, and there are champions that don't. If you think about a champion like Yasuo, you have to fundamentally trade with the wave, like E into the wave to get a trade onto the enemy. So you're actually hitting the wave and trading onto the enemy. You're doing two things at once. But if you think a champion like Lux, I can actually either hit the enemy or I can hit the wave or something like that. So so you know that's a very simplistic view of it. That's that's one of the re that's one of the things that makes a, a champion simple. The second one's very straightforward, mechanical execution. The most important one though is reference point clarity. Let's take a champion like Malzahar. When you think of him, he's squishy, he's like a scaling mage, he has very, very pronounced power spikes, you know exactly when he's strong, when he's weak. And what that does, it allows you to put yourself in the mind of that champion and know exactly 
how you need to think, right? When you think of Melzar and compare that to say a, uh, a Silas, well, with Silas, what do I do? Like when I'm approaching a fight, what should my mindset be? Should I go in? Should I not go in? Should I play fast? Should I play slow? When do I go in? Do I flank? Do I play front to back? I don't know. It's, it's very difficult to conceptualize, especially for a beginner player, what their mindset should be. And remember, your mindset precedes your behavior. Your mindset is what dictates your behavior in the game. So if you don't know what your mindset should be, then it's very difficult to make consistent decisions. And a lot of your games are just gonna be a coin flip otherwise. So that's why I like these archetypal assassins or archetypal um, mages because it can put you in a very particular mindset. Uh, that's kind of my personal take, and that's what's given my clients, especially the, the lower elo clients, a lot more success. So once you've decided upon this champion, you wanna understand their identity. What do they want and why? What are their strengths and weaknesses? When do they spike and trough? What do they synergize well with and why? What do they get countered by and why? Learn to be your champion. Don't worry about getting counterpicked or anything like that. Don't worry about counterpicking draft, meta, all that crap. That's not important. Don't get sucked down that rabbit hole. What's, what's important is that you get as many games in on your champion as possible and really become the champion, be the champion. And when you're learning to build your champion, I would actually recommend you stick to a particular style. There are champions that have multiple styles. For example, like there's Zed, right? You can go Electrocute Ignite with full lethality, or you can go like the more um, like Conqueror with Eclipse and like a more, or, or, or like a, a sustained damage bruiser style. You know, I would recommend sticking to a particular style, become a master of one style. There's a quote from um, a jazz musician, Kenny Werner. We actually did a great episode on Kenny Werner on the Broken by Concept podcast, if you're interested, where he says, learn one note until you're a pianist for one note. Learn the setup, the setup on that one champion for, you know, so well that you are a proper league player for one champion and one setup. You'll learn more about the game going deeper than wider. And if you're really wanting to nerd out on how this learning journey works, you can actually go to my Yone guide. I've actually got a segment called the learning journey with Yone. And I talk about it through the lens of the Dreyfus skill acquisition model. If you're kind of really wanting to nerd out on the whole skill acquisition, how it relates to League of Legends. Now you may ask, what about dragons, rift heralds, barons? How should I think about them? Yes, these are all very impactful and they're all very relevant. But what is more important is two important concepts, adapting to chaos and protecting yourself at all times and being aware of what you want. Now you may say, what the hell does this mean, Curtis? Like I, all I wanna know is dragons and barons. <laughs> what is this, how does this help me? I'm gonna use an analogy for this. Let's say you're driving to work on a busy highway in the morning. The car in front of you, just maybe slightly to your right, is driving erratically. Maybe they're on drugs or drunk from the night before, we don't know. But you still need to get to work, but you feel really endangered. This guy's driving all over the place, he could crash into you. So you need to find a way to kind of get past him or avoid him so you can still get to work on time. You might have to slow down a little bit, you might have to find a safe time to overtake, but you, you, you ideally are doing it a way that keeps others around you also safe. This is exactly like many of the situations you'll find in League where one or two of your teammates might start a dragon, but you don't really want it. Maybe you're, you're you know, on low resources, you're sitting on a shit ton of gold, you don't have your ultimate, whatever it might be. Most of the time I tell people, look, you know, you help them if you can, but protect yourself at all times. The worst thing you can possibly do is blindly follow, get yourself killed at the expense of others. So this is why it's all about adapting to chaos while protecting yourself at all times. League of Legends is the definition of chaos. There are nine other people in the game or with their own agendas playing how they like to play and they're only viewing the game through their tiny little lens, their own sliver of a lens. So if we're all looking at the game through one sliver of a lens, you can, it, there's bound to be chaos, there's bound to be contradicting ideas even though you're on the same team. And this is why, in order to have success in League of Legends, you need to accept that you're gonna be put in many situations that suck. But you must adapt. The players that adapt, rather than complain about this stuff, are the ones that have success. League is the best game at forcing you into uncomfortable situations and making you problem solve your way out of it. Don't complain about it, suck it up. And this is why if you have the mindset, okay, how can I make the game as easy as possible for my team to win? You are gonna have a lot more success in the long run. A lot of people talk about this whole, 
oh yeah, my teammates suck, they're making all these bad decisions. This is coming from a place of like a lack of empathy. They're not putting themselves in the shoes of the enemy. If you go into the VOD and you look at that situation from their perspective, you can probably see why they made that decision. Even though it's uncomfortable to do that and it hurts your ego, you could probably realize why they made that decision. Now, I do want to talk about compensation. Compensation is one of the most toxic habits to have. Compensation basically is you, you make a play that you know is bad because a teammate is influencing you. It is the most toxic habit. And it's actually a very fine line between compensation and adaptation. And I actually go deep on this topic in this video. Highly recommend you check it out. I'll put the link in the description as well. But what about all the toxicity and the negativity, Curtis? Because that's all I hear about, right? Like nowadays, league's a shit game because everyone's toxic, everyone's negative, you should quit, why I'm quitting league, all this stuff. Okay, let's get into this. This is a very meaty topic. I won't bullshit you guys. League can bring out the worst in certain individuals. You will experience these people at one point in time or another, no matter what, it is inevitable. The combination of a brutal snowball centric game with anonymity on the internet, immaturity, heated competitive passion will cause a shitstorm. So the way I view it is that when you play League, you subconsciously sign a contract with Riot Games that goes something like this. And this is what we call on the, on the Broken by Concept podcast and inside the Midland Academy, the solo queue contract. So I, Curtis Morgan, am aware that people will get angry, throw tantrums when things don't go their way due to the snowball-y, chaotic nature of the game. I am aware that I, there is no such thing as deserving wins. I am aware that I'm likely only going to climb with a 52% win rate. I am aware that I will automatically lose games due to others on my team. I am aware that I will lose the game for other people. I'm aware that I'm going to go on lost streaks. I won't always get my role or champion. My champion will be nerfed or weak in, a give, uh, weak in a given meta. I will make mistakes. Other people around me will be obnoxious, close-minded, delusional. Welcome to League of Legends. And guys, remember, if you actually kind of think about all this, and translate it to real life. Welcome to life. This is just life. Welcome to life. There are idiots everywhere. You know, you, what are you going to do about it? You're going to sit there and, and go on Reddit and complain all day. I I ran into a guy on the tram today and he was really rude to me and screw this guy and I wish the police were punishing him. Or you can move on. You can let it go. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. Welcome to, welcome to League of Legends and welcome to life. When you understand that these things will happen and you manage your expectations... You're going to have a much healthier relationship with the game. Most people in League of Legends only get angry because they have unrealistic expectations. They believe League is like any other game, like a Counter-Strike, where they can quote-unquote 1v9, they can carry. You're playing Counter-Strike, you're on Dust 2, your entire team die, but you can kind of kill everyone on the team and win the round still. And because there isn't that snowball-y kind of element, or as snowball -y element in, in, in other FPS games, there is an element of snowballing because there's gold and things like that, money. Um, you know, they come into game thinking that, you know, they can overcome all this. They can win like 85% of games. That's simply not the case. So you've got to manage your expectations. League is, a, is the most hard game. It's a very hard game, but it's a very beautiful game. It teaches you a lot about life. And just as a side note, I do recommend using the slash mute all function every single game. What I, what I personally do is mute all and then unmute the pings. That's why I, that way I can kind of see what my team is communicating with pings, but I just won't see the bullshit. So that's kind of what I'd recommend for 99% of the population, unless you're like master plus. Now it's also important to mention that a significant portion of the league community becomes progressively more toxic and negative as the years go on as the you know every year they play the game because they they don't know how to become a better player right in league we don't like i said before we don't have the luxury to isolate skills like other games and this is why a lot of people they're like they're getting frustrated they're like i'm not getting results i've been goal for four years i'm getting progressively more frustrated and I can empathize with these people because it's not like it's laid out. It's not like the, it's not like the journey to improvement in league is laid out. It's not like in a traditional sport. I know I got to jump high, I get stronger, run faster, you know, throw this ball into the net more accurately. Like it's a little bit less clear, and, and this is why the more time you spend in the review, identifying mistakes, looking for room for improvement, it clears up a lot of that mental baggage. And what I've realized. The further detached you become from why you are a given rank, the more tiltable and vulnerable you become. If you don't know 
what the difference is between gold four and platinum four or silver four and gold four, and you stay in that rank for a while, you are going to lose your mind. So this is why coaching is such an important thing in league and why a lot of people get coaching. Um, but this is also why, you know, I recommend, you know, reviewing your games. I recommend trying to really get into the details and be like, well, why did this fundamentally happen? And so I don't want to go too deep on this because again, especially as a beginner, I don't really recommend reviewing and we'll touch on reviewing in a sec later on in this video. Um, but it's just an interesting observation I've noticed at large uh, within League of Legends. Another interesting trend that I've noticed in the League community is that people automatically assume that if you lose a game, it's a waste of time. What does this remind you of? This is an extension of that previous mindset where if I don't know how to improve and I lose a game, then obviously it's a waste of time because I'm not getting better and I don't know how to get better. So they view it as a waste of time. Hence why losses become more and more painful. The, the, the less clear it is for you to like know how to get better and the less clear you are about what specifically you need to, need to do better, the more painful the losses are because it is straight up a waste of time. But a game really isn't a waste of time if you choose to learn from it. Right? If you if you learn from a game, it's not a waste of time. It's only a waste of time if you're not getting any learning from it. Even if it's a 15 minute surrender, you can still learn things and take things away from your early laning phase. Um, so don't let the community and like the league Reddit and all these you know shitty toxic areas of the, the community influence you. Um, a loss is not a waste of time. So what will your league journey look like? Well, again, this depends on everyone's league journey. Like I said earlier on, everyone has a different league journey. But for the most part, a very, I would say a relatively impressive stock stand, I'll say a relatively impressive journey, but someone is getting no coaching would look something like this. Season one, bots, normal games get to level 30, becoming familiar with all the champions, deciding upon a role, etc. Season two, unranked to gold four. Season three, gold four to platinum four. And then season four onwards, it really depends on the client, how dedicated they are, their gaming background, etc. And I have seen much faster climbs than this. I've literally seen unranked to gold four season one, then gold four to D4 season two. I have seen that. It's just quite rare. And it depends if you get coaching or not. So Again, this is all on a spectrum. You're somewhere on the spectrum, but this, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm talking about this because I want to manage people's expectations. If they say, Curtis, what? It takes three years to get to Platinum 4? It takes two years to get to Gold 4? Yes, welcome to League of Legends. There is a lot for you to understand. Touching back on reviewing, I don't really recommend you review all that much if you are below silver. Like Silver 4, that's where I recommend you definitely start to dabble in reviews, you know, and again, your reviews shouldn't be longer than five minutes, but if you're below Silver, all you should do is get into the review, or get into the client, or the, the you, depending on what program you're using. Go to maybe one or two moments that confuse you. Maybe you don't know why you died, or maybe you don't know really uh, why you took that really bad trade, or whatever it might be. Look at it, try and problem solve. Even though you're not going to be able to come to the exact reason, and even though you're not really going to uh, be able to break it down perfectly. Just the attempt of getting into it and being curious is a very powerful tool and will pay dividends in the long run. I actually have a video on my YouTube that explains the importance of reviewing and differing ways to review in uh, how to improve intuition. I will link this in the description below if you're interested. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this one. I thought it'd be very important to spend time breaking down pieces of it, bad advice that are commonly spread throughout the community and giving you the no bullshit answer, the real answer, right? So the first piece of bad advice is, dueling is the best way to climb, you avoid the trolls and you have an advantage using comms. The no bullshit answer is, if you duo, you are tarnishing your own improvement journey. Simply put, you are ruining the learning cycle. Learning comes from making a decision, reviewing it or seeing what happens, taking learnings from it and applying it to the next game. If other people in the game are influencing your decision making and making decisions for you or giving you information, then you're not the one who's experiencing the learning. Not to mention the compensation plays, toxic expectations, versing other duos, the list goes on. I could talk for hours about why duo is not good in the long run. Duo is kind of like a very short-term game. It, it, yes, it might work for those few games, and yes, you might actually have a little bit more success in the short term, but you're completely stunting your growth. It's the definition of short term. So if you're interested in genuinely getting better at the game, do not duo. The only reason you should duo is if you don't care about improvement whatsoever and you're just playing to have fun with your friend. If that's the case and that's what you want to do, great thumbs up. I have no problem with it. But if it's talking about improvement, 
Never, ever, ever duo. Bad advice number two. The matchmaking is terrible. You, you'll always get trolls on your team. They're gonna stop you from climbing. So you should just buy a higher MMR or higher ranked account. The no bullshit answer is, if you aren't a troll, so you're really honest with yourself and you're not the troll, then the odds are already in your favor. Just run the numbers. That means every single game you play, your team is less likely to have trolls than the enemy team because on your team there's five members and we know that you're not, so that means they're gonna be four trolls and on the enemy, that means there can be five trolls. So all you need to do is just focus on your improvement and gameplay, let the trolls deal with themselves and, and, and you're naturally going to climb anyway. And most people who kind of think like this, they are the troll, they just don't even realize it. And the other thing here that's very important to understand is that there is no way of truly knowing what rank you are until you have actually played hundreds of games at that particular rank. Anyone can get temporary lucky. and Anyone can win a few games, get on a hot streak and climb up a few divisions. But if until you play hundreds of games in that particular rank, you won't know if you're really justified that rank. So, you know, if you were to buy an account, chances are 99% of the time that you are gonna be out of your depth and you run the risk of becoming a highly delusional player. Bad advice number three, play the meta champions because they are the strongest and most overpowered, you'll win more. The no bullshit answer, meta doesn't mean anything below master tier. Everyone is playing so suboptimally below master that the stat differences are negligible. For example, let's say Lux gets a buff to her Q for 40 damage. Most people are going to think, oh my god, she's OP now. In reality, you look at most Lux players, they're missing like 50% of their E's. If they just landed one of those additional E's, they've already made up the difference on the stat differences. Also, on top of that, the more you swap your champions and the more you adapt to the meta, the less champion mastery you're, you're inherently going to have. Therefore, you're spending the time, spending less time learning the game. Because remember guys, you're only doing one or two things. You're either learning the game or you're learning the champion or developing champ mastery. P pick your poison, which one are you doing, right? So if you're swapping champions, you're never learning the game because you're permanently developing champion mastery. Hence why champion mastery is so, so, so important. I cannot stress this enough. Bad advice number four, just watch and copy what the pros and high elo players do. The no bullshit answer is, it's great to get inspiration from high elo players, but you cannot compare challenger players to silver games. The way lanes play out is completely and utterly different, not to mention the jungle pathing. If you're gonna watch these high low VODs, bring it back to basic trading patterns and basic champion fundamentals. If you strictly copy, you'll be left feeling even more overwhelmed and confused and it simply won't work at all and you'll actually play worse. Bad advice number five, try to be a 1v9 player. You gotta focus on carrying all the noobs. The no bullshit answer, you only need to do your job. That's how you win games, nothing more, nothing less. If your job or role in the game revolves around peeling another fed carry, then so be it. It may not look sexy, you know, there's not gonna be no montage plays, but you're gonna win the game. The 1v9 mindset is often toxic and generalist because it puts you in this path where, puts you on this path where you're fundamentally not adapting to what's happening in front of you. If you're coming into the game with this mindset that, okay, I've got to carry everyone, I've got to get 10 CS per minute and carry all these noobs, you're going to be busy split pushing on the side while your team is fighting over the next dragon. Or you're gonna be busy split pushing on the side or getting farmed and resetting whatever it might be while your team is grouping and A-ramming mid. You'll, you'll literally miss game winning opportunities because of this 1v9 mindset. Your job is to stay away from this mindset and keep your, your mindset focused on what is my job, what is my role in this game, game to game. League is a game of specifics. You cannot have these generalist mindsets. Now the last piece of bad advice is if you can beat high elo players in normal games, then you should you deserve to be that rank. Like you should be a similar rank to them. The no bullshit answer is, the rank of a player is often dictated by the quality of their mistakes, not their plays. You can just get lucky in a game, right? You can get lucky, the, the stars align, you know, you get the great matchup, your jungle camps you, so you get a bunch of ganks, which influences the matchup, you got two winning sides, and this is even to say that the person you're versing is trying. They might not even be trying, Fine, you can win that one game. But remember, consistency leads to LP, not fancy one-off plays. One game doesn't dictate or justify your rank. Hundreds of games do. So if you were to verse that player 100 times, what do you think is gonna happen, right? The consistency is the key to your rank. Nothing else, uh, not the quality of your plays, mainly the quality of your mistakes. Let's talk about ranked anxiety. This is a term that is commonly thrown around in the league community, and I thought it'd be great to clarify what exactly is it 
and how to tackle it. Now, there are certain individuals that will over time, I guess, develop anxious feelings or emotions, feel nervous, basically out of fear that they might lose the game and might lose LP. And it's completely backwards because when you think of it, you can only improve by playing the game. So if you find yourself becoming anxious when queuing up, then I would suggest two immediate antidotes, sorry. The first one, get more games in, play more games, get regular blocks of three. Blocks of three is something we talk about in the Broken by Concept. It's a mantra inside the Midnight Academy. It's essentially game review, game review, game review. And it's a very convenient way of kind of structuring your process. Um, so essentially, right, think of it as, as going to the gym for the first time. The first three weeks you go to the gym, it is absolutely miserable. You're like dreading it. Like, I don't want to go. I'm sore. Everyone's staring at me. I'm weak. It just feels terrible. But by, if you just brute force it just by sheer habit and schedule, you get to that third week. More often than not, you'll feel like you're just a gym goer. That's part of your identity. And you won't even have to think about it. You're just getting the reps in, essentially. It's the same thing when it comes to league. League must be the dojo. It is the place where you train. It's not this. Fa- it's not like the world's final or anything like that. You've got to get those reps in. If you follow a schedule for three weeks with regular three blocks in, say five, three blocks a week, I guarantee you by the end of those three weeks, you won't have ranked anxiety at all. And remember, LP comes from being a better player. So you need to focus your attention on improvement rather than LP. Do I want to look like a gold player or do I want to be a gold player? That is the real question. And like I said before, Solo queue is your training sanctuary. It's not some giant, huge event. It is the place we get in the reps, we develop our skills slowly but surely. Keep this in mind. Now, lastly, having a healthy relationship with League is something that um, I'm extremely passionate about. There are many ways to develop a healthy relationship with the game, but I'm gonna talk about one simple approach that is, I would say personally in this last year, really positively impacted myself. I believe League is just simply another medium to express who we are as individuals. Every game is an opportunity to show the world who we are on the Rift and share our creativity. Think of each game as a blank canvas. We are there to express what we know to the best of our ability. And at the end, let's just see what we created. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean there isn't room for improvement. But that performance is an extension of us, right? That painting we, we, you know, we we put on the canvas, that is an extension of us. We don't play league for anyone else. It is your hobby. It is your passion. We must remember that. And so that's why fundamentally, it doesn't even matter if someone comes faster, slower, plays a different champion, um, plays a different way. It is our opportunity to express who we are. No one, no one in the world will play the game like you do. You can take inspiration from other people, other people can take inspiration from you, but no one will have the exact same inputs or commands as you. It is an opportunity for you to express who you are. And isn't that cool to leave your personal signature on the rift? It's a really cool way to think about League of Legends as a game. So again, this is another reason why it's nonsensical to compare ourselves to anyone else because our journeys are all so unique. So hopefully this gives you a little bit to think about, puts you on the right path. I tried to cover everything, at least in a holistic way. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Enjoy your journey. Have fun. It's a beautiful game. Cheers.